If you think the future of electric vehicles is already settled, think again. Because the biggest shift in battery technology may happen without most Americans ever benefiting from it. Rivian is one of those companies that sparks mixed emotions. On one hand, it represents innovation, bold ideas, and a genuine attempt to rethink what an electric vehicle can be. On the other hand, there's a very real concern about its financial future, and that puts investors and enthusiasts in a difficult position. You might admire the vision while simultaneously worrying about whether the company can survive long enough to fulfill it. Still, one thing is hard to deny. Rivian's CEO, R.J. Scaringe, is an intelligent and thoughtful leader who understands the importance of batteries better than most executives in the auto industry. And that's exactly why his recent comments about the future of EV batteries matter. During a recent interview, Scaringe laid out his view of where battery technology is headed and what Rivian is prioritizing. His focus is clear. Faster charging without sacrificing range. That goal makes perfect sense. Shorter charging stops would remove one of the biggest pain points for EV ownership, especially for people who rely on public chargers or take long road trips. If electric vehicles are going to replace combustion cars entirely, charging convenience has to improve dramatically. But here's where things get interesting. Scaringe points out that faster charging often comes at a cost. Push too much power into a battery too quickly, and you risk lowering energy density or shortening the battery's lifespan. This trade-off has shaped EV design for years, which is why most electric cars still take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes to add a meaningful amount of range. According to him, the challenge is finding the right balance between charging speed, energy density, and long-term durability. He's not wrong, but the full picture is more complicated than that. What many people don't realize is that a huge part of battery limitations in the past wasn't chemistry, but knowledge. Engineers simply didn't know how far they could push certain batteries because the testing hadn't been done. Once manufacturers started experimenting with extreme fast charging, hundreds of kilowatts at a time, they discovered something surprising. Some batteries were far more resilient than expected. In other words, the batteries themselves hadn't changed nearly as much as our understanding of them had. That realization has already reshaped what's possible. In China, companies have been aggressively exploring this space. New lithium iron phosphate batteries, for example, are achieving fast charging speeds once thought impossible for LFP chemistry. Some can now handle charging rates approaching one megawatt. But that capability comes with trade-offs. Higher charging performance often means lower energy density, while higher energy density usually limits charging speed. You can have one, but getting both at the same time is extremely difficult. Scaringe argues that some of these ultra-fast charging batteries are too heavy and don't deliver enough range for their size. That criticism isn't unreasonable. Physics still matters, and every design choice has consequences. He also raises concerns about durability, suggesting that aggressive fast charging could reduce a battery's capacity by 20 to 25 percent over roughly a thousand charge cycles. However, real-world data complicates that claim. Large-scale studies of EV owners who rely heavily on DC fast charging show that battery degradation is often much lower than expected. In some cases, drivers who fast charged daily for years saw only modest losses in capacity. That suggests battery architecture, thermal management, and chemistry choices can dramatically influence outcomes. It's not simply a matter of fast charging kills batteries. Sometimes it doesn't, at least not in the way people assume. Rivian is clearly trying to address cost and performance at the same time. The company is moving toward larger battery cells, 
simplifying pack design and making the battery a structural part of the vehicle itself. These changes strip out unnecessary materials and complexity, reducing costs without altering the chemistry. In many ways, this mirrors what other automakers have already done. Fewer cells, simpler structures, and more efficient packaging. But where Scaringe becomes more cautious is when the conversation turns to alternative chemistries. He expresses skepticism about the near-term readiness of solid-state batteries, suggesting that much of the hype exceeds reality. Automakers and battery companies have been promising solid-state breakthroughs for years, yet large-scale production remains elusive. Polymer-based approaches, experimental designs, and lab prototypes are interesting, but scaling them is a completely different challenge. Then there's sodium. Sodium ion batteries are often mentioned as a future possibility, but rarely treated as an immediate threat to lithium-based chemistries. The question Scaringe raises is simple. Can sodium batteries scale? Can they be produced cheaply, reliably, and in massive volumes? The uncomfortable truth is that in some cases, they already can. Modern sodium batteries are no longer theoretical. They've reached energy densities comparable to today's mainstream LFP batteries. They perform better in extreme heat and cold. They rely on abundant, low-cost materials. And, perhaps most importantly, their projected lifespan is staggering, measured not in hundreds of thousands of miles, but in millions. All of that comes at a cost that can be dramatically lower than lithium-based alternatives at the pack level. When you put those facts together, it becomes hard to argue that sodium batteries are merely an experiment. They represent a structural threat to the lithium market itself. And yet, most Americans may never see them. Trade barriers and geopolitical realities mean that LFP batteries already have limited penetration in the United States compared to China and Europe. Sodium batteries face the same obstacles. Even if the technology is superior and cheaper, it doesn't matter if it can't reach the market. Unless trade policy changes, the U.S. may remain locked into a narrower set of battery options while the rest of the world moves on. That creates a strange and uncomfortable divide. Outside the United States, the trajectory seems clear. Over the next five to 10 years, sodium batteries are likely to undercut lithium iron phosphate on cost while matching or exceeding it on performance. With fewer downsides and significant upsides, lithium-based chemistries could lose large portions of the mass market segment. Lithium won't disappear overnight, but its dominance could erode far faster than most people expect. At the high end of the market, solid-state batteries may eventually carve out a niche. But that niche will be small, limited to premium vehicles, where cost matters less than performance and energy density. For everyday cars, affordability and durability will matter more. And that's where sodium shines. What makes this shift even more striking is how early it still is. Sodium batteries are already approaching energy densities that once seemed out of reach, and improvement curves suggest they won't stop there. Five years from now, today's numbers may look conservative. So the real question isn't whether sodium batteries will change the industry, it's who will be allowed to benefit from that change, and who will be left watching from the sidelines. What do you think happens next?